Welcome to Wealth Made Simple with Shaz, where you'll learn how to master your money through business, property, and tax saving strategies. Your host has collectively helped his clients make tens of millions of pounds in additional profits through these strategic approaches to business. Introducing Shaz Nawaz, an award-winning chartered accountant, property tax expert, entrepreneur, and property investor. What are we talking about tonight, Kieran? So t- tonight we thought we'll take it in a different direction tonight. We're still talking property and investment strategies and different things you can do. But tonight we're going to talk about more niche strategy, real niche strategies, stuff that a lot of people probably haven't heard of, a lot of people probably haven't considered. And until, I mean, until I learn about them, I mean, it, you, you read them, you're like, that that's a thing? Really? Um well, you don't know what you don't know. Well, well, this is this is it. This is very much true. And so the first one. And is, so, how do you find out what you don't know? Um, or, or how do you establish what you don't know? I ask someone who does know. But how do you know that they know what you don't know? Well, they've been there, they've done it, and it's it, a lot of it's about research and about under, knowing where to go. Because I may not know the answer, but I know where to find the answers. And I think you know, it's Google is a great great platform for finding out answers to questions you didn't even know you had, let alone, you know, questions that you need answering. But I find that if you type in a generic enough question that has a block of lots of different answers, that generally gives you more information than you ever needed. That, that's generally where I start. And then I, then I, once I've, once I've got a general idea, then go and ask people, ask professionals, ask people in the industry, go through various social platforms, go through you know, various companies, look at them, see what they're doing, see how they're doing it, and learn from there. So you believe everything you read on Google, do you? Absolutely not. And is that? And how, how do you verify that information? Like I said, it's, once I've got the answer, I go to the people who, who are allegedly doing it, or not as the case may be in some cases, Yes, and we've seen a few of those, haven't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I can do this. I can do this. Can you now? Mm. Okay. Let's see. Ah, well, when I said Didn't I can. quite mean that, when, yeah. What, what I actually meant was. <laughs> I've, I've seen somebody. Yeah, ex- exactly that. Do it. And, and so, but when, when you find the people that are actually doing these things, you know, most people, and it's something we discussed last week, most people who are doing something successfully are happy to give you information. They're not. They're not hoarders of information. They're quite open with what they know and what they've learned. And, you know, quick reach out. Hey, notice you're doing this. I'm looking to get into it. Have you got any tips? You know, and you'd be surprised at how many how many people will actually take the time to get back to you and give you some information. And also, I, I, and this is obviously linked to property before we delve into the first property strategy because we always obviously talk about mindset. Uh, I think uh, finding experts is important. Absolutely. Yeah, and sometimes we can all maybe be guilty of not fully appreciating experts. So when you find find an expert, uh, we should all, all, always value them. And I'm, uh, I'll share with you a story uh, that uh, one of my surgeon friends shared with me. So he invited a, a friend of his for dinner and they had a, a lump of meat. And he, he, his friend was saying, well, pretty much any idiot can be a surgeon. All you do is you cut people up lightly piece piece of meat so he cuts it all up and said here you go and the surgeon says yeah you're about right they said but there's one one more thing we do we put it all back together again so off you go put that back together again i can't do that he said that's why i'm the expert yeah yeah that's a bit like um i had a friend once who worked in computer security and the company he worked for got taken over by some other company and They didn't understand what he did or why he was there. So, you know, they put him at risk of redundancy, which was, you know, bad times for him. But then when something went catastrophically catastrophically wrong with all their systems and they called him into a meeting room and asked him to fix it, his response was, no, I'm at risk of redundancy. That means you don't need me. So you can fix it without me, right? They were like, well, no, we have no idea how to fix this. He's not, just because there are no fires doesn't mean you get rid of the fire department. Absolutely. And he ended up keeping his job. So, wins all round. Good for him. 
Yeah. Was his name Kieran Bateman by any chance? It was not, sadly. I am not that savvy with computers. Uh-huh. I wish I was. You know more than most, by the way. So before we go into the first property strategy, anything on mindset that you want to share with people? Because we always start off with mindset, don't we? Uh, we, we yeah, we, we always have a section on mindset. And I think, I think understanding the le- le- learning every day, you know, as, as we covered right off at the start, it is important. And, but also, if you're going to be busy learning, try not to be a busy fool. Because you can take it as you so adequately put. If you believe everything that you r- read on Google or on any other website for that matter. Online or wherever, yeah. Doesn't matter where. If you just read everything that, believe everything that you're told, do no research, then you're going to become very busy doing a lot of nothing. And that's detrimental to you and generally the people around you as well because you'll be running here, running here, there and everywhere with no defined goals, defined purpose or understanding of what you're doing. And I think that, that that's, that's something that is very important is understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's all well and good, you know, how do you make a cup of tea? Well, you put the tea bag in, you add the hot water, then you add milk. That is, that is the way. You don't add milk first. It's just my opinion, though. But I may disagree with you, by the way, but... You might. And Kieran would be more than happy to hear your thoughts on whether you put the milk first or the water first. Or no milk at all. Or no milk at all. Exactly. In and which case, we don't have a debate, do we, then? Because then you can only put water first, can't you? Because it's the only thing that goes in there well, after the tea it. bag. This is it. So tea bag first or water first? Well, that's the next question, isn't it? And all of these things come down to an understanding of what's actually happening. Most people don't know why they do it in a particular order. Because we've always done it like this. But is that the reason to do it? Yes, because we've always done it like this. Our company started in 1734. And we've always done it this way. So there's no better way to do it. There's no reason to change. But if it's not broken, why fix it? Because there might be something better. Yeah, well, it, that is the, I think I've, you and I were talking about this a couple of days ago. Uh, and yes, we do talk outside the radio show, by the way. And uh, remember, I, I was into the number one answer people give us. But we've always done it like this. Exactly that. Why should we change? And that's the thing. If, you're not, if, you're, if you just do something just because then you don't understand why you're doing it. If you don't understand why you're doing it, you don't know if there's a better way. But it's a big shift for, in terms of mindset, isn't it? Okay, it absolutely is. Uh, in terms of, you know, why are we doing something and is there a different or a better way of doing it? And most people don't actually ask that question because they can become comfortable, they're in their own comfort zone, doing things as they're doing them and they're okay with that. I think learning a different way requires effort Okay, time, energy, enthusiasm, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so why do that? Let's just carry on doing what I'm doing already. Uh, and yet, there could be a much better way, a much more efficient way of doing something. We can save you time, money, uh, and improve whatever you're doing. But if I if I said to if you said, for example, I don't know, you're you're doing a a computer program, or you know, you're writing a book, or you're teaching someone something in mechanics and engineering. And I said to you, okay, so how long does that take you? That takes you, you know, 12 hours a day for the next seven days, but then it will be finished. I go, okay, if you spend five, 10, maybe a week, a week, call, call it a full week worth of learning, but that will half your construction time for the next rest of your life you know, whilst you still use these techniques. Okay, you've got to spend a week learning it, but that week you spend learning has saved you 50% of the time, every time. So instead of doing one project... For the next week, one, two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, fifty, 10, 15, 20, 50, how many years that you're going to do that job? So isn't it worth putting the time in to learn? It is, but people don't have that time, do they? I would argue that you don't have you the time. I mean, don't you? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. But pe- the general excuse is, I don't have that time. Do you have the time not to learn that skill? Can Be- you afford not to? Can you afford not to? So if people haven't got time, how can they create time in your experience? In my experience, when people say they don't have time, what they mean is they don't want to make time. And two very different things. Because I struggle. I have struggled in my life to find anyone 
that is busy 24 7. There is, you know, if you say it's average work day, you've got Monday to Friday, nine to five. Okay. So let's say, for argument's sake, you're up at six, six thirty, get yourself ready, get yourself out the door, get yourself to work. You work till, you know, 5 p.m., get home, it's 6 p.m. You've got to cook, clean, sort the animals, the kids, everything else out. Okay, by the time all of that's done and everyone's gone to bed, you're looking at eight, half eight, maybe. Okay. How much how how much time are you now gonna sleep? What time are you gonna go to bed? Are you gonna go to bed at half eight and then not wake up again until half seven? I mean, that's a lot of sleep. You wanna watch TV, eat enders. Well, if you wanna watch TV, okay, fine. Right. How long are you gonna spend watching TV? Eat enders. How long does EastEnders last? I have no idea. I don't watch it. Call it half an hour, shall we? Should we call it half and an hour? And when that finishes, I'm going to watch Emmerdale Farm and they've got Coronation Street. So let's say half an hour again, times three, one and a half hours. So eight, half eight, takes me to 10 o'clock and then time for my beauty sleep, Kieran. So I haven't got time. Uh, so if you want to do it during the week, when you're in work mode, for example, I would say all those episodes have an omnibus on a Sunday. Catch up on Sunday. But do some extra work during oh, the week. You've sleep got, on a Sunday. You've got an hour and a half every night. An hour and a half every night is a lot of time to get something like constructive done. You want to make like on a Sunday, Kieran. To make my life hard, you want to make my life easier. But a few months, few years of hard work... Years? ...will make the rest of your life easier. No, thanks. Years? I thought you... you Give me some kind of a magic pill or a uh, silver bullet or a magic bullet that sorts my problems out. You want to spend yeah. years? Well, it doesn't have to be years. Yeah, that's for murder nowadays. Well, this is true. But I would rather spend the next year, two years, working hard, working as much as I can, just stepping into the background and just getting things done and learning and educating and improving. And then the rest of my life... I can spend living free, doing what I want, how I want, when I want, because I've done the things I need to do to get there. As opposed to, I don't want to put that effort in now, and in two, three, four years' time, I haven't changed where I am. I'm exactly the same place. Well, then, then you get you know, 10, 15 years down the road, maybe you're looking at retirement, and you're looking at retirement, and you look back and you go... If I'd have put a bit of extra work in back then, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But you can't go back, I'm But afraid. you can't go back, I'm afraid. And I think that that's an important point because sometimes we're all guilty of the fact that if I need to improve, and let's use the example you shared uh, in terms of time, it's going to take two years. People always think, I don't have two years. And I think it always helps to break things down. So how do you eat an elephant? A bite at a time. Yeah, absolutely. So you fix a certain amount of time. It could be 10 minutes, it could be half an hour, every day, every other day, on doing whatever you're doing. I think those small, consistent steps regularly will help you get to the end goal slowly but surely by having milestones. And obviously also, if it's something important to you, having some kind of a reward for yourself, some recognition. I think I've got to this stage here. Okay, I'll... Do X or Y or Z or whatever with the family or myself or buy myself something or donate something to charity because I feel good about it uh, and do something nice that helps you feel successful or that you're contributing. Absolutely. And I mean, if hypothetically, in the same scenario, you don't want to give up on, on your soaps during the week. Okay, fine. Wake up half an hour earlier. It's not half an hour every day. Half an hour every day is, what, two and a half hours a week on the five days that you're five working? Days, yeah. Or three and a half, yeah, for seven days. Yeah, three yeah. and a half for seven days. It's a story that uh, is, is, is a good book, by the way, uh, by uh, Jim Collins, who wrote Good to Great, which is a fantastic book. But then he uh, there's a second book, which I believe was called Great by Choice. And he shares the story of Captain Scott on his expedition. And the other chap, they were both competing. Uh, and Captain Scott didn't make it, and the other guy did. Uh, and the big difference was, no matter what the weather, no matter what the conditions, no matter how he felt, how much energy he had, how cold it were, uh, he had a set plan. For example, 
I don't remember, we call the exact numbers. I'm going to walk three or five miles every day. Yep. So Captain Scott would say, ah, it's too blistery outside. It's too cold. I'm feeling tired today. I'll do 10 miles tomorrow. Whereas the other chap did his three to five miles, whatever the figure was, consistently every, day, every without single fail. day without fail. And he made it to his goal. Captain Scott didn't. So you see, there's just small, consistent steps that help you achieve your objective. I mean, prime example of that is Friday, you weren't feeling 100%. Yet you still managed to make it in. We still managed to get things done that needed to get done because there wasn't an option not to do it for you. And then you killed me in the weekend by making me run a two-day course. I did. Aren't you evil? I'm a terrible human being. You I are. look after you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our peaceful mindset for this week. So yeah, absolutely. Decide on something you want to improve in your life. Whatever it may, may be, let's talk about education for today. And you're looking to improve, let's say you, you're in sales or you want to improve sales, read books, go on courses, webinars, magazines, YouTube, online, and st study sales. Could be marketing, could be anything, could be public speaking, could be writing, whatever it is. Work on that skill regularly, half an hour, 15 minutes, if, you have, if you're really tight on time, over the next year, and you'll see a marked improvement. But the big, big thing to remember about all of that is... A little bit of something beats a lot of nothing. Absolutely. And so even if you feel like, you know, I'm not feeling great today, I've only, I'm only going to do five minutes. Five minutes is five minutes more than nothing. And it will benefit you in the long run, even if you're only doing five minutes. Absolutely. Consistently. Let's get into the world of property then, shall we? So let's get, yeah, let's get into the world of property and property investment strategies. Now, just a caveat, we are not financial advisors. Nothing we give is financial advice. Nothing we say on here is, in, we're not... Talking we're, about Sharia law or if we're talking no. about interest, we're not saying that, uh, we're not endorsing it. No. We're just sharing information on how the... Western or the UK marketplace works. Absolutely. If you want, obviously, an expert opinion, then you should see somebody who's an expert or a scholar in those matters in terms of Islamic law and jurisprudence. And if you're looking at investment strategies, uh, then you want to speak to uh, somebody who's qualified to give you investment advice. Yeah, because we are not those people. No, we're just saying information. Exactly that. So the first one, with that out of the way, is PBSA. Now, PBSA is an interesting one because it stands for Purpose-Built Student Accommodation. Now, student accommodation is obviously going to be more popular in university cities and you know, university towns, uh, big college campuses, places like that, where, where there is an abundance of students. Um, and these are come, – they come in two main types, and they are similar to a – previous strategy that we discussed, which is HMOs. But these are, you know, as the name suggests, designed purely for students. And like HMOs, there are similar downsides, similar upsides to PBSA. But one of the most ups biggest upsides of this type of strategy is you can pick your tenants like clockwork because the student year the school year comes around at the same time every year. You know when they're coming in, when they're going out, when you're going to have to change it, when they're moving on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it makes it, makes it really nice because that cycle is set. And what's really good, by the way, uh, is that you can have your rooms let out, depending on the area and the demand, sometimes for 52 weeks, although it's not occupied for 52 weeks because obviously there's a half term and well, there's not half term per se, but, but when the students break up... Summer holidays, Christmas holidays. Well, it's Christmas, Easter, uh, after a uh, semester. Yeah. They're not there, but they can pay throughout the year. Or if they're finishing after the summer term, then most universities uh, have summer courses. You can then rent those rooms out for the by summer. the night for yep. the summer on those particular courses. And turns it more like a SA. So you've got... Some good, you got a good income stream coming in. Even better than that, uh, but usually it's forty-three weeks, sometimes forty-seven weeks. And I've seen different types of agreements, by the way, Kieran. Then if you get a nomination agreement with the university, which basically, in very simple terms, is guaranteed rent, where they take over the property 
from you and you can get a long lease on that or a long nomination agreement which is like a long lease of say 25 years then and your rent's virtually guaranteed for the next 25 years which is going to make it really easy okay or it's going to make it effective because easy i think it is a word that's overused and perhaps miss and misunderstood or misinterpreted it's going to make it really efficient and effective for you in terms of raising finance because banks love those nomination agreements they can see the guaranteed rent they can see the strength of the university and uh, they are going to lend you a good amount of cash both in terms of if you're looking to for funding to develop a site or if you're looking for uh, refinancing once you've developed a site so that works really well yeah, but n- nomination agreements aren't easy to no. come by no they're not but on the flip flip side of that if you don't have one of those agreements in place then you've got to look at a lot of places will give you um, rent up front. So even if it's private private renting for student accommodation, you'll get a whole term rent in one lump sum. So again, it's very secure in terms of the income and the cash flow because if, for example, hypothetically in a lot of situations, the parents will pay accommodation fees for their children and pay the deposit and the deposit and be the guarantor because sometimes people think students are going to wreck my property I and mean, that's not always true students don't always wreck your property but people have that fear well you've got the, a guarantor in place thanks for listening to wealth made simple you can follow and contact shaz on the facebook pages and trust property tax and the profits wizard you can also find shaz on linkedin youtube and instagram Alternatively, email him at shaz at aa-accountants.co.uk. Build your wealth by mastering money.